Lord moved last night. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I believe the Lord wants to help his people. Yeah. Yeah. I really do. Amen. He's just that kind of God. Hallelujah. And if we really want help, we can get help. Yes. Amen. The brothers done told us tonight, if we want to go to heaven, we can. But we right. got to have a clean record to get there. Yes. Hello. Right. Amen. And I believe we can have one. We can walk right. and have a clean testimony even in this world. Right. Before men. Yes. Amen. And the Lord can help us do it even in this hour, this uh, tremendous hour that we're living in. Great falling away. Yes, it is. Amen. The age of apostasy. The age of the lay of the sin. Amen. But aren't you glad there are those? Amen. That the Lord said, and they shall walk with me and wife, for they are worthy. For they Praise are God. Worthy. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis. Yeah. They shall walk with me and wife, for they are worthy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, good old preacher friend of ours done gone on to be with the Lord, Brother Crawford. Amen. He said, What we need is a robe washing revival. God, where we get our robes washed. Amen. And walk with him. Well, I'd like to walk a little closer, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes. Amen. We count it such a joy and a privilege to be here. Amen. In uh, Pine Grove tonight and to be a part of this homecoming. We're very grateful to be asked and considered. Amen. It's a humbling experience to be amen, here with you folks. Amen. But we're always glad every chance we get to be with you. And we thank you tonight for your giving. Uh, may the Lord richly bless you uh, for all that you've done. Amen. And it takes people to have homecoming. You yeah. know it? Yeah. Amen. I tell you what, it takes people. If you're going to preach, you're going to preach to people. Praise right. God. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. So I want to try to preach tonight. If the Lord had just helped me. Come on. Amen. I don't want to keep you as long as it did last night, but I want to obey the Lord the best of my ability. Turn with us to the book of Matthew tonight, Matthew chapter 15. We'll begin with verse 21. We're so glad tonight to have Brother John, Sister Judy, my yeah. mother-in-law and father-in-law. Amen. I have a close relationship with them in many, many different ways. And it uh, means a lot to me for them to come down early. They weren't obligated to me by any measure to come. Amen. Especially, uh, you know, this traveling business is hard on them. And, um, but... I'm glad they came. It means a lot to me, and I appreciate them and the life they've been to me over the years and the inspiration, the wisdom, and the guidance they've given me through the instruction of the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed in the two, the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me. O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Yeah. But he answered and said, It is not meat 
to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Mm -hmm. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs do eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Raise your hand and pray one more time. Father, tonight we sincerely reach unto thee in your anointing tonight. Needing your blessing, needing your touch, needing the power of God. Lord, to move up and down the avenues of our souls tonight. Lord, ignite a hunger within our heart tonight like we haven't had in a good age, Lord. God, ignite within us a thirst for more of you. More of you, Lord, and do a work in our lives tonight around these altars, Lord. God, help us to find more of you, discover more of you, get closer to you tonight. We ask and pray in that wonderful and lovely name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. You, you may be seated this evening. Amen. Very, very interesting story. Amen. We see our Lord. We see three groups of people here. We see our Lord. We see his disciples. And then we see an outcast. Someone outside the circle. Come on here. Amen. Jesus' ministry initially was to come to seek and to save the lost sheep yeah. of the house of Israel. Yeah. That was the first <laughs> part of his earthly ministry. And at this point in time in Matthew, Jesus was still reaching for the children of Israel. Right. Right. Amen. We can read in the beginning of chapter 15. Amen. And Jesus, especially after chapter or verse number 10. Amen. He gets in a discussion with the amen, spiritual or religious, let me say it that way, the religious leaders of this hour that Jesus was in. And what defiles them is what he eats in. Praise God. Takes in. But Jesus said, no. It's what proceeds from the heart and comes out of a man right. that defiles a man. Come on, you hear me yeah. tonight? Yeah. Hit me while I preach. Hallelujah. And so we can read here after verse number 10 that Jesus gets in sort of a debate, praise God, with them. Amen. He gives them a parable. And even his own disciples say to him, Lord, tell us what this parable means. Amen. And he said, Art thou also without understanding? Hallelujah. He said, They are blind leaders of the blind. Uh -huh. yeah. If the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into the ditch. Yeah. Amen. So we already see, amen, the intense moment that Jesus our Lord was already having with the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Oh, yeah. Amen. So as he leaves this scene of the hard-hearted, as he leaves the scene uh, of these rejected, uh, amen, or rejecting ones who are so blind that they cannot see their very Messiah, their hearts are so hardened that they cannot even understand uh, that before their very eyes stood the one uh, that was called Christ, amen, the Son of God. Uh, and as he leaves, he heads, uh, amen, toward the coast of Tyre and Sidon. I don't know where he was heading. I don't know why he went that way. But the writer takes notice 
of this event uh, and begins to say as he went to Tyre and Sidon and along those coasts, uh, behold a woman of Canaan. Very important to notice tonight that she was of Canaan. She was not of the house of Israel. Come on here. Right. Amen. She was not a daughter of Abraham. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Can I kind of tell you this way? Jesus, amen, had ammunition. He had goods with him to deliver to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and he wanted to deliver the goods to them but they would not have it right. hey, man, and could I say this like this tonight as Jesus began to walk the shores of the coast of Tyre and Sidon I believe this Canaanite woman looked out and saw him walking and said this Here's my opportunity. Hallelujah. Amen. I just can't get away from it. Praise God. Amen. About that window of opportunity. Uh -huh. uh, we, we say that because we're referring to, Brother Mitchell, a point of time. Right. And a lot of time. Come on here. Uh -huh. Amen. I know Brother Mitchell is familiar with time frames. Uh, hallelujah. He's dealt with situations today with the water that has, has probably slowed down the process to a point that the window to meet the delivery is a getting narrow. Yeah. Huh? Come on here. Yeah. Amen. I've been on the projects that I've had to get drawn. Amen. And the window is only for a certain time. Amen. To get it in, get it fabricated, and get it on site. That was called a window. And this woman whose daughter laid back home possessed of many devils looked out and saw Jesus as he began to walk the shores of a of sky and side on. Said, I see a window of opportunity. I've only got a short time. He's passing by. He may not stay. Come on here. Amen. I would that Jesus our Lord had come by tonight. Amen. And on his way to wherever he's going. Would you just stop by here, Lord? Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, are you with me tonight? I'm trying to get to my point here to preach a while. Amen. But I've got to lay a little foundation. Praise God. Oh, yes. Uh, this woman came out of the same coast. Uh, she was not a daughter of Abraham, uh, but she was considered a dog uh, and cried unto him, uh, saying, Have uh, mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, uh, and begins to give her petition unto him. Uh, it sounds like to me maybe she had Rehearsed uh, in her mind. Uh, if I ever be him, uh, this is what I'll say. Jesus, uh, have mercy on me, son of David. Uh, and uh, here we see her as she rehearses uh, in the very ears of our Lord uh, the thing uh, that would get his attention uh, if it was said by a daughter of Abraham. Yeah. Come on here. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. And so with that plea of mercy, acknowledging him as the son of David, and rightfully so, right. she was right on course with her right. judgment. Right. Huh? Amen. She believed, no doubt, that he was. But can you believe what happened when he turned, did not uh, turn to her, but rather he answered her not a word. Don't it make you aggravated when you try to talk to somebody and they don't even answer you. Act like they don't even hear you. Hey man, Brother John told me about a fellow he used to drive to Redford, Virginia with at the Army, at the Army Arsenal plant they used to work at. Hey man, Brother John said I'd be talking and I'd talk and I'd talk and he wouldn't say a word. And he said, finally, I'd, I was finished talking. And about 30 minutes later, he'd say, was you talking to me? Praise God. 
Amen. Did you say something to me? Amen. We don't like it when we're sincerely trying to ask somebody a question. Amen. We want an honest answer. But how would it have been for us if we'd come to the Lord and He just never answered us a word? For a lot of folks, they would have turned around and went home and said, there ain't nothing to it. He don't even know how to give me an answer. He can't heal my daughter. Yeah. Amen. But this woman was not easily offended. Right. I've never seen an age where people are so offended, right. even in the house of God. Right. Oh, Come on right. now. Oh, Amen. I mean, come to the house of God with a chip on their shoulder. You can't hardly preach on anything. And you don't mean that's a bite. You're not trying to get onto their toes because you know it's a sensitive situation. But yet when the Holy Ghost helps you to preach, amen, they get offended. You knew that about me. Come on, come on dear. Come on. Huh? Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. People get offended at this, at that. Amen. But this woman, amen, ignored the offense yeah. and pressed on right. and persevered. Yeah. Then she came uh, and I believe I'm getting ahead of myself. Yes. But he has heard not a word. And his disciples came to add insult to injury. The twelve helpers, the twelve disciples, came to the Lord and said, Lord, would you have just seen her away? Yeah. Huh? Amen. I mean, she had been crying, had mercy. Jesus, thou son of David, until the disciples was ready to pull their hair out and said, Lord, do something with her. Send her home. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. We're getting weary. Yeah. With dealing with her. Right. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. oh, she cried that for us. But he answered and said, Amen. I can see him as he keeps walking and his disciples behind him. Lord, send her away. And he says, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I've got goods with me that belong to God's people. I've got goods with me that belong to the children of Ezra. I've got goods with me that belong to the children of Abraham. Yeah. Uh -huh. God the Father has sent me to them. Yeah. Then, there's another conjunction I was telling you about last night. Yeah. Then, a change then. begins to happen. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just when you thought the situation was hopeless, yes. then oh God. things turn. Oh God. Amen. Oh God. Then she came and worshipped him. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes, Lord. Do you know what will get God's attention quicker than anything? Yes, oh Amen. Yeah, it's good when the saints shout hallelujah. It's good when the saints run up and down the aisles yes. and roll across the floor. Yes. Amen. But the thing that will get heaven's attention and the thing that will make Jesus get up off the throne and plead with his father for your case is the fact that you fell on your knees and began to worship the Lord God of heaven. Yes. Help me tonight. Could I preach to us? There is a difference between praise and worship. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Praise is when we thank Him for what He's done. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We praise Him for how He saved us. Yeah. We praise Him for how He's healed. And we praise Him for the strength to work. And we praise Him for the food on the table. We praise Him, amen, for He's a Jehovah Jireh, the provider. 
Amen. And he, amen. He's a great healer that he's uh, saved us from sin. But I'm telling you, worship is when we simply worship him for who he is. Uh, no strings attached. Uh, when you would say, God, you never do another thing for me. You still God. If I die in this valley, you're still God. If I die down here a battle, you're still God. If you never bring me out of another trial, you're still God. If you never bring me out of this battle, you're still God. This woman fell down and she began to ring heaven's prayer bells on the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Amen. One of the first records. Amen. Of a Gentile woman. Amen. Ringing the prayer bells at the throne of God. And she began to worship him. If you don't hear my daughter, I still believe you're the son of God. If you never touch my daughter, I still believe that you are the Messiah. She worshiped him. She didn't just praise him. She worshiped him. Amen. Worship comes from the old English word worship. Worthiness. He's worthy of our praise. No wonder John the Baptist, amen, or John the beloved brother would write and say, amen, oh, glory to God, help me tonight, Jesus. Amen, oh, help me tonight. Amen, John the beloved, amen, would write and cry on that aisle of Patmos. Amen, and said, worthy is the Lamb of God to open the seals. Hallelujah, worthy is the Lamb. And worship him. Say to Lord, help me. Again, tonight we see a case of desperation. Desperation brought me back to the old bright cross. Huh? Yes. Amen. Desperation had drove her to worshiping right. this king of Israel when his own people would not recognize him, right. when his own people would not worship him. For John chapter 1 verse 11 said, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as believed on him, gave he power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. Oh, she's beginning to get somewhere. She's beginning to touch his heart. Amen. And he turns around. I can see in my mind's eye. It says, it is not me for me to give the bread to the dogs. It is not me for me to take the children's bread. Who is he talking about? When he said the children's bread. The Lord told you he's got the goods with him. And those goods are intended for his, the children of God. And he said, you're touching me in a way, amen, that I've not been touched and that I desire my children to touch me the way you are. Ooh. But I can't give to you the thing that you're asking. Come on. You know what? We need to get to the place just like this woman. We don't argue with him. We said truth, Lord. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, I, I'd say she was just a housewife, more than likely. Kept the home. But we see for once, amen, she had within her the spirit of a lawyer. 
as she begins to defend her case. Yes, Your Honor, truth. What you're stating is the truth of the situation. But she throws in another conjunction and says, But the dogs do eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Amen. Here is the situation. This is a woman needing a child's healing. Her very daughter. And she has come to the man who can do it. Right. But his mission is to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeah. Amen. But he can't give what he's got to her. It's intended for God's people. Yeah. And so we see him. Amen. Beginning to be touched when this woman pleaded her case like a Philadelphia lawyer unto the courts of heaven. Amen. And says to him, but the dogs do eat of the crumbs. Yes, Lord, I will admit I'm nothing but a dog. But if I could have some crumbs from that bread, I believe it would help me. Come on, now. Now, let me tell you what I'm preaching on. I'm preaching on the crumbs are not for the children. Woo! I said the crumbs are not for the children. Come on here. Hey, Amen. Now, you and I have been in this way a good while. Huh? We've been traveling on the glory road for many a day now. And we've come through many a battle. Yeah. Amen. And we're now to the place, amen, that we can't live on crumbs alone. Huh? Come on here. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Oh woman, great is thy faith. Be it so unto thee. And when that woman got home, her handful of crumbs cured her demon possessed daughter. Amen. And healed her. And you know the thing about it? She didn't even have a loaf. She just had the crumbs. Yeah. Why did she have the crumbs? She was the dog. Come on here. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Now I want to tell you something about little children because I used to be a little children. Amen. If you don't watch little children and you give them a sandwich and a little puppy comes along, he'll pitch his whole sandwich away. And give it to the puppy. Yeah. When the whole time mom and daddy had intended that sandwich to be for little Junior and for little Susie. Help me now. Amen. But that dog is getting the blessing. That dog is getting the bread. Yeah. Uh, crumb by crumb. Uh, hallelujah. This woman did not ask uh, for the loaf that belonged to the children of God. Uh, she just asked for the crumbs uh, that fell from God's good table. Uh, and I want to tell us tonight, uh, I believe, Brother Lester, that God does answer prayers for some sinners. Right. Yes, he does. Come on here. Uh, if you ever listen to Brother Paul Dealey sing that song, amen, all them songs that he wrote, and he begins to tell the story of how he loaded on that bus to go to World War II, uh, and his dad stuck his hand uh, up in the window, amen, and uh, shook his hand and held on to Brother Paul's hand until the bus pulled out and parted their hands uh, as he went to fight on foreign fields uh, and in the middle of the battles uh, he would say God uh, if you'll just help me get home uh, I'll get saved uh, and give you my life uh, God honored that prayer did you hear me tonight uh, I said God kept him uh, to World War II uh, and brought him home uh, amen and when he got home uh, he went to the house of God uh, and got saved uh, I want to tell you tonight uh, there is a God in heaven uh, 
who lets things rain on the just and the unjust. Amen. He answered prayer for the just and the unjust. If he finds it necessary, if he finds that it's needful, he will do it for the sinner man. He's not obligated to by any stretch of the imagination, but because his love for the sinner is great as it is, he will at times grant their petition. Think about it. Think about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Help us, Lord. She went home with this. She said, Kathy, that woman went home with this. You know what we do? If we were needing something to eat and somebody came along and gave us a bag of crumbs, well, we'd just look at it and say, How dare you? And throw them down. But God will send crumbs, hallelujah, to a sinner person who is not a child of God and heal their demon possessed daughter. Then tell me, what can he do if we get the whole loaf? She go 
goes in the house and begins to prepare that meal and all. And she does just like the man of God says. She poured out the last bit of meal. She poured out the last bit of oil. And she mixed the cake and baked it. And she took it to Elijah. Amen. He said, go now and make for thy son. Amen. And she goes back. Amen, Brother John. And she finds just as much as there was. Amen. Earlier when she made his cake. Come on here. Amen. I'll never forget the story. Brother Hades Crawford told in our church of a woman he knew personally out in Oklahoma. Amen. During the time of the depression of the early 30s, work was hard to find. Amen. But after much praying, her husband got a job. They lived in Oklahoma. He got a job with the city. Amen. Oklahoma City. Amen. And the pay it was so tight and so long that he had to wait three weeks. Amen. Before he could get paid. And that's where we get the term long as a three-week paycheck. Amen. That's a long time. Amen. And they had in their house one of those old Hoover cabinets. Amen. How many knows what a Hoover cabinet is? Uh, I do. I'm I'm just 45, but I know what Hoover cabinet is. They done come and gone before I come along. Amen. That's a, a little cabinet. Amen. Usually about gay wide. And amen. Stood up here about six, six and a half feet high. Had doors on it. Amen. But the old Hoover cabinet had a hopper right under the right under that cabinet. And you pull it out. Amen. You poured your flour in. And when you pulled it out, it dropped it out. Amen. Where you could put it in a bowl. And she went over there and looked down in that hopper. And she said, Lord Jesus, we're getting low. She had children to feed. She had a husband to get ready and feed him before he goes to work. Amen. So she got up and she made biscuits every morning. Sent biscuits with her husband to work. Sent biscuits with her children to school. Amen. And the day came. And she never told her husband. She never told her children that today was the last day that mama could buy or, or rather make biscuits. And it would still be two weeks before daddy could get a paycheck to buy flour enough to make biscuits. Her mill barrel was empty. Come on. Amen. She got down and began to pray, Lord, you see what situation I'm in. Lord, would you send us some flour? And she got to praying right real good and began to feel pretty good about what she was praying about. And the Holy Ghost spoke to her, said, get up, open that hopper on the Hoover cabinet, Stick your hand down in it, wave it, and say glory. <laughs> I'm telling you a true story from the God I serve. Yes. She said, oh, that's ridiculous. She began to pray some more. And she prayed more. And felt the presence of God again. And she heard that voice, get up. Stick your hand in that hopper. Wave it around and shout glory. Well, she got up on her knees that time. She wasn't too happy about it. She said, well, Lord, I'll, I'll do it anyhow. I don't know what good it'll do, but I'll do it. Amen. She got up. She pulled that hopper down. She stuck her hand in and said, glory. When she did, she felt something. Yeah. And so she decided to say glory a little louder and a little longer. Amen. And after about the third time of saying glory, he said the Holy Ghost hit her. She held one hand with the hover and stuck the other one, kept the other one, stuck down in it and began to dance in a semicircle like this, saying glory, 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 glory. Amen. And she spoke in tongues. When the Holy Ghost lifted, she looked down in the hopper. 
and there was flour. Amen. Hey, her children, her husband never knew. And every morning she would get up and find new flour in the hopper. Hallelujah. Would to God tonight somebody in the house would say, Don't give me the cross. John, <laughs> amen, John Boy, 
Amen. Has cattle and has sheep. Amen. But I want to tell you, he gives a certain call. Amen. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Amen. I don't care where them cows are. I don't care where those sheep are or what they're doing. They'll lift their head and turn their ear and respond. Oh, and that cow balls out. Amen. That lead heifer or that lead cow. Amen. Speaking to all the other cows, uh, the master's calling. Uh, and only the hungry shall hear the word. Uh, if you're not hungry for the Lord, you'll sit in a service uh, and never hear the call. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Dear God. Oh, Brother John Isaac will never call without feet. And he'll never feed without calling. That's right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Our blessed Savior never calls without feeding. No. And he'll ooh. never feed unless he calls. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Hearing, oh, they yeah. shall not hear. And seeing, they shall not see. Amen. I would to God we'd have such a move. Amen. That the guitar player couldn't stand to play. And milk down in the altar and whip. Would you come? Are you hungry? Do you hear him calling? The devil will talk to you and say, don't you dare go down there. You know you won't get a loaf. You'll just go home with some crumbs. Hey man, why don't you tell the devil to get behind you? Soldier, come down to this front and say, God, I'm tired of the drums. I need the Lord. If you can heal a demon possessed girl, amen, and deliver her with the drums, then my God, what could you do for me? Do I have the whole of Don't live below your right. Don't believe live below your privilege. Claim what's rightfully yours. I've come with the goods, the Lord said, but they're for the children. You don't have to have the crumbs. You don't have to have the crumbs. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah.